all species with, uh, interact with other species. There's no species on Earth that is able to maintain um, all of their functions alone. Um, they all depend on one another in some way. And, but we, f we need to understand that in order to predict what will the, uh, be the impact of climate change on the distributions. The Iberian Ponds project uh, consists of six uh, main locations across the Iberian Peninsula. Uh, we have decided to, to have multiple locations in this project to be able to cover an environmental gradient that is relevant uh, to understand how food webs are responding to, to climate change. After 20 years of working in a project um, in, in, in the study of the distribution of the species, we realized that it wasn't sufficient to do what we were doing, which was just correlating the distribution of the species with um, environmental parameters. We had to study how the networks of interactions among species would affect the distributions of the species themselves. The food webs that we find in these different regions are therefore very different. Uh, for example, in the south of Spain, in, in Murcia, most of the species that form these food webs are already very accustomed to higher temperatures and to withstanding, uh, withstanding drought. On the other side of the spectrum, in the mountain tops, we are, are finding species that are not only uh, used to periods of water, but are also withstanding periods of snow or even uh, freezing uh, uh, of the water. We are using two approaches to collect the organisms from uh, our ponds. One is the conventional uh, methods. We use nets with different mesh sizes to collect the different organisms. And we, we are using a novel method that uses environmental DNA. There is DNA that is shed by organisms into the environment. So we just collect a water sample and do all the lab work that we need to do. And at the end, we we'll have a list of species that are present in our ponds. The basic idea that uh, underpins what we do in this project is that there are, there, there are going to be two main uh, climate change scenarios uh, for, for the peninsula. Uh, one of the scenarios is that we are going to become much, a, a little bit like the Mediterranean and with drier climate and, and less periods of rain. So with this and regarding to, to our system, we are predicting there's going to be an increase of drought and earlier droughts than expected. On the other side, the, 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 the alternative scenario is that there is going to be a tropicalization of the peninsula. In this scenario, there's not necessarily more droughts, but there's going to be a warming uh, associated with extreme events uh, of rain. So uh, in our project, we are trying to study the consequences of these two different changes by simulating uh, these changes experimentally in, in our ponds. Once we have those species identified, we are looking to the traits of those species, meaning their characteristics. For example, uh, we are looking into the functional role um, of those species in the ecosystem, meaning if they are producers, herbivores or predators. We are also using isotopes in which we can trace carbon and nitrogen through the food web and we can infer who is consuming who. What species do in a given place, in a, in a given ecosystem, has an impact in a range of services that ecosystems provide to people. But I'd say we have a two-step process here. One is to understand how the environment affects the biotic communities, the biology of the organisms, their distribution, which is the first part of, of the project. And the second part is to see how those communities and how their dynamics will affect the services provided by ecosystems. I mean, clearly food webs 
are um, the means through we can, we can study the, the, the biological world and translate it into something that society will understand and, and benefit directly. Yeah.